Hello, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests. Uh, welcome to the final webinar of this year's TVET Leadership Program, uh, the graduation ceremony. Uh, we gather today not only as individuals, but as a global community united by a shared commitment to advancing TVET. Uh, you now join a select group of exceptional leaders as part of the TVET Leadership Program alumni. And now throughout this uh, ceremony, we will be fortunate enough to hear from distinguished speakers who will bring insights, expertise and inspiration to further enrich us on this occasion. Today, we will have speakers from UNESCO Univoc, UNESCO headquarters in Paris, participants of the TVET leadership program, as well as alumni from a previous program. And now, regrettably, our head of office, uh, Mr. Friedrich Hubler, is unwell today and cannot attend. Uh, however, he does send his heartfelt congratulations to all of you. So without further delay, let's begin. Uh, first off, I would like to introduce Mr. Hervé Huot Marchand, uh, Chief of the Section for Youth Literacy and Skills Development at UNESCO headquarters, uh, to give his opening remarks. Uh, you actually may remember Hervé from the first technical webinar who presented on the UNESCO strategy for TVET. So on this note, Hervé, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, uh, Rory, for uh, introducing me. Uh, I'm very glad to be to be again with you, as you you recall, uh, Rory, that I intervened in uh, some of the session which was uh, related to the UNESCO strategy for TVET 2022 to 2029. So it's my pleasure to be again with you uh, for this opening of uh, uh, this uh, graduation uh, ceremony of the UNESCO Univoc TVET Leadership Program 2023. I would say in short, uh, TLP 2023. Uh, uh, this is, uh, I mean, a, a brilliant and a very important uh, moment because uh, this ceremony comes after uh, several weeks and at least, uh, I mean, almost uh, two months of uh, very rich uh, exchange and discussion related to uh, TVET. So here, again, we are uh, in a good time uh, to celebrate, I mean, uh, your graduation. Uh, after all these uh, the learning uh, you were able to uh, uh, to work on and uh, all also uh, the rich uh, discussion uh, along these uh, these weeks um as i said i mean it was almost two months of uh, discussion and allow me to to come back on the key learnings uh, and discussions that uh, took place uh, notably in the, in in four main uh, weeks of uh, of of learning uh, which uh, enable you uh, to uh, go uh, more in depth in uh, in uh, on Tibet, uh, broadly speaking, and notably to discuss about uh, uh, the rapidly evolving and dynamic uh, Tibet landscape, which is a uh, key today because uh, you know uh, how far I mean the world is uh, changing. It's not also uh, um, homogeneous in terms of uh, what we should do in various uh, member states. So it uh, it was also good to have your insight. Uh, regarding and your contribution to uh, what has to be done uh, for TVET to have a, a better impact in uh, our UNESCO work, but also in your own uh, agenda. I would like to recall uh, mainly uh, three main uh, key topics of discussion that uh, took place in the last uh, at least uh, four weeks. And just to recall, uh, firstly, for the first uh, learning week, uh, that you explore international commitment on uh, TVET, including, uh, of course, the strategic link uh, of TVET with uh, SDGs beyond SDG 4, so in an uh, intersectoral uh, dimension and collaboration, uh, which is also embedded in, uh, in our uh, UNESCO strategy for TVET 2022 to 2029, uh, uh, which I presented to you. Uh, entitled Transforming Tibet for Successful and Just uh, Transition. So it gave you also an umbrella for all the discussion. Uh, I would like to, to recall also that in uh, the second learning week, uh, the discussion focused on the latest thematic trends in line with the UNESCO strategy, but also, as I said also quickly, uh, to uh, related to the link uh, with uh, over strategic and global processes on education and training, and notably, uh, key aspect, uh, key new trends, uh, some are not fully new, but were accelerated by some parameters, uh, at least uh, the COVID-19 crisis. But I would like to uh, emphasize, I mean, uh, the discussions that took place on uh, greening TVET, but also digitalization of TVET uh, linked to, uh, I mean, the topic of artificial intelligence as well, 
And the third one is about uh, inclusiveness of uh, uh, Tibet. That was the focus of the first week. Um, the second week, sorry. And for the third week, I mean, uh, the agenda moved ahead into uh, more, I mean, uh, the skills uh, that are um, targeted here, I mean, in the leadership uh, uh, program 2023 uh, from UNESCO Univoc International Center. And the focus was, uh, in fact, on the leadership uh, skills uh, that uh, uh, we need to, to build uh, all together to drive uh, the change uh, to better advocate on, uh, on, on, on Tibet. And it was really a very good opportunity to learn more about uh, the change uh, which are uh, required in the world and brings uh, also together uh, the resources uh, that are needed uh, to achieve uh, this change. In the fourth uh, learning week, uh, it was closed by, the, by a technical uh, webinar. You, you will remember uh, this webinar. It was led by you as a participant, and it was the opportunity to uh, showcase two promising proposals uh, for implementation in, uh, in your uh, respective uh, Tibet system or uh, institution. Just as a recall, you remember the first one, which, uh, which uh, was shared by uh, Kin Jung Yoon. Sorry uh, if I pronounce uh, not uh, very good, uh, but just to recall that uh, she's a national Tibet expert from the Changzi Polytechnic Institute in China, and uh, the presentation was uh, about a proposal uh, for establishing an eco innovation hub uh, to promote uh, green Tibet for economic and social uh, benefits. The second, uh, I mean, promising proposal, uh, which was uh, shared during this uh, fourth learning week, week uh, was uh, an over insightful proposal presented by uh, Fiona Rasul, uh, who is a principal of a New Amsterdam Technical Institute in Guyana, and also uh, Abdi Rashid Ibrahim, uh, the Director General of the Ministry of Labour and Social Affairs in uh, Somal Somalia. The proposal uh, focuses on improving gender equality, which is, uh, of course, uh, of high importance. I mean, we well know that at UNESCO we have two priorities, which is uh, uh, Africa and uh, gender. Uh, so focus on gender equality uh, and the proposal, uh, for, I mean, aims, aims to uh, align uh, with the uh, Strategic United Nations Sustainable Development Cooperation Framework. Uh, the UNSDCF, uh, which is known as the former uh, UNDAF uh, for the UN uh, country team. And this proposal uh, incorporates uh, gender sensitive awareness uh, programs and aims to facilitate internship uh, uh, opportunities uh, for notably female students uh, with uh, local industry. So it was, a, I mean, a good achievement uh, in this uh, uh, fourth learning week. So we can see uh, globally, I mean, and more, uh, also more in depth uh, through all these uh, contents uh, and uh, outcomes uh, of the of the former session uh, that uh, we can, we could uh, at this stage conclude that this TVET Leadership Program 2023 edition uh, is not only um, an opportunity uh, to provide uh, valuable knowledge. But uh, it, it is also uh, really uh, an opportunity uh, to encourage uh, participants uh, to rethink their potential uh, for reshaping um, their your own uh, institution. So it was timely, as I said uh, at the beginning, uh, to mark uh, the end of this uh, important program, led by UNESCO Univoc International Center, to organize today uh, this virtual graduation session. Now, uh, let me uh, raise that uh, you will now join uh, the alumni network, which is composed of uh, almost uh, 800 TVET leaders, managers, and staff from more than uh, 95 countries. So you now you, you are part of a, a global network that could be leveraged at uh, any stage. Uh, to finish my opening remarks, I would like, uh, on behalf of the head of UNESCO UNEVOC, but also on behalf of uh, uh, Boren Chakroun, the director of uh, the Division for Policy and Alpha Learning System, who, jo who joined us uh, today for uh, this opening. So I wanted to uh, congratulate you all once again.
for the great job you did during the last uh, two months of this uh, leadership uh, program. I want also to thank uh, One World for the technical, uh, the very appreciated uh, technical support uh, they provide to this uh, leadership program. But also I want to uh, thank the following uh, speakers uh, that presented during the program of uh, this year. Uh, first, uh, Mr. Robert Parois, Education Program Specialist at, at our uh, UNESCO Beijing office. Also Kenneth Barrientos, uh, famous uh, program specialist at uh, UNESCO UNEVOC International Center. Uh, I would like to thank also Professor Yang Wenming from the Shenzhen Polytechnic University, which is a UNEVOC uh, center as well. Uh, thank also to uh, Priscilla uh, Gatanoi uh, from uh, UNESCO UNEVOC. Shamal Mujambor, uh, Majumbar, sorry. Uh, the former head of UNESCO UNEVOC, who intervened in, the, in these programs, but also at uh, UNESCO headquarters, uh, Mrs. Ottilie De Switch, uh, the head of uh, the Result Based Management Unit at, uh, at BSP uh, UNESCO headquarters, and two colleagues also from my team here at headquarters at the section of uh, Youth Literacy and Skills Development, uh, namely Mattia Olivari and Hiromichi Katayama, who provided insight uh, to the leadership program. The last but not the least, I would like to thank, uh, to, to give a warm thank to uh, the German uh, government and notably the German Federal Ministry of Education and Research, uh, BMBF, and the German Federal Ministry for Economic Cooperation and Development, BNZ, for their very appreciated, appreciated and continued support uh, to this program and globally, uh, UNESCO, UNEVOC International Center, and as a whole, uh, UNESCO. I wish you all a fruitful uh, graduation ceremony. Back to you, Wari. Thank you very much, Hervé, and I really, really do appreciate those uh, uh, kind words and uh, acknowledgements uh, for both uh, the people who've uh, supported uh, and participated in the program. Uh, so now uh, we move on to the next uh, section, uh, the section. The graduate experience of the TVET Leadership Programme is very important to us. Uh, it allows us to learn about how uh, you as graduates interacted with the course and how you've benefited from it. So in this regard, we have selected two participants to share their experiences. Uh, here we will have insight into the new learnings that you have uh, gained and uh, from the leadership program and also the new ide ideas triggered from its content. So I now introduce two participants, uh, Ms. Anam Abbas, uh, Principal at the Government Vocational Training Institute for Women, uh, Tevta Punjab in Pakistan, and Mr. Shu Martin, Executive Director of Green Partners Association in Cameroon. So I will hand over to Anam, who will then provide her first testimony, uh, followed by Shu. Over to you, Anam. Thank you for the introduction. Hi, everyone, and good afternoon to honorable experts and dear fellows. Congratulations to all of us. Indeed, it was a great journey and amazing experience of learning and pride. As I am speaking at Yonimok, sharing my journey and insights, waves of emotions and excitement fill my heart. It's a moment I have often imagined and now it's a reality that overwhelms me with joy. In imagining this moment, I envisioned not just speaking here, but speaking here with a purpose, a purpose to contribute, learn, and foster positive change. Thank you, Univoc, for providing this platform. Dear fellows, the very first question would be asked to us, I know would be, what would be next and how we will implement it. My dear fellows, what would be depends on who we are and how we see ourselves as a leader in ever changing world. Ultimately leadership is based on two influence. Every one of us has a different background, diverse organizations and roles. As for me, the primary motivation to joining the TLP was a deep-seated commitment to advancing sustainable practices in Tibet. 
as we navigate the complexities of our evolving world, our educational institutions must be at the forefront of environmental consciousness, digital innovation, and inclusive TVET. My research concerns are TVET and leadership, global practices in lifelong learning, and luckily, the webinars and modules resonate profoundly with me during the program, inspiring a pledge to do more, do more. The discussions on greening TVET and embracing digitalization as catalyst for positive change ignited our passion for improving and transforming our institutions. In the context of Pakistan, where the dynamic landscape of TVET is integral to the nation's development, these insights gained from the TLP are particularly impactful. Aligning with the Univox strategy 2022 to 2029, our commitment to greening TVET and embracing digitalization mirrors the broader global vision for sustainable development within the education sector. As we strive to implement these strategies locally, the fusion of international perspectives from training program enriches our approach. This enhancing the quality of education and positions our institution as key player in advancing the goal outlined in the Univox strategy. Furthermore, it has underscored this significance of inclusive TVET, emphasizing the importance of creating an educational environment, accommodating diverse needs and backgrounds, recognizing the Univox strategy's commitment to inclusivity. I am inspired to champion initiatives that ensures equal access opportunities for all learners beyond our institution. The TLP has motivated to develop strategies beyond conventional approaches, fostering an inclusive TVET model that addresses every individual's unique challenge and aspiration, regardless of gender, socioeconomic status, or abilities. It has furnished with invaluable insights that I believe resonate with fellow participants. The emphasis on current industry needs and the fusion of tech theoretical knowledge with practical application have shaped my perspectives. Engaging Google groups, especially, I must say, and WhatsApp discussions have fostered a collaborative environment, providing an avenue for exchanging ideas and experiences beyond the formal program structure. The power of these online communities cannot be overstated as they serve as dynamic platform for the continuous learning, networking, and mutual support. Moreover, the interactive question sessions during webinars have been instrumental in deepening our understanding. The real-time exchange of thoughts and inquiries has created a dynamic learning environment. This sharing aspect has not only enhanced the richness of the program, but has also strengthened the sense of camaraderie among participants. By this program, new ideas has blossomed, responding directly to the pressing needs of Tibet. Institutional transformation is not just a goal, it's a necessity. The TLP has catalyzed innovative approaches that I am eager to implement, especially focusing on green skills and environmental sustainability has been a foundation of my evolving vision. As a digital creator and ambassador of Tevita, I am inspired to integrate sustainable practices seamlessly into our educational framework as a sustainability leader. Moreover, leveraging social media advocacy will play a pivotal role in spreading the importance of green skills and environmental sustainability. This approach ensures that our initiatives impact our institutions and contribute to a broader dialogue within the communities. As we look forward, 
the role of Univoc and its partners becomes paramount. The support of this community is not just a formality, it is the backbone of collective progress. I urge to collaboration and resource sharing to foster and thriving community of TVET leaders. Indeed, this program has been a transformative obesity, driving us towards our future where our institutions are not just educational entities, but beacons of sustainability and technical advancements. I look forward to the continued journey with each of you as we pioneer positive change as TVET for all. Leadership matters. Thank you and over to Shu. Hello, Shu. I think you're on mute there. Can you hear us? Just in the, the bottom left-hand corner, you'll see the, the mute button. If you look to the bottom left-hand corner, you'll see mute okay. and stop video. Okay. You have it? Yes, we got you. Excellent. Good to have okay. you on board. Okay. All protocol here respected. Let me begin by thanking the organizers of this event for honoring me to deliver one of the two testimonies of the graduate experience of these to these incredible organizers, graduates and guests in such a great occasion that marks the closure of this special career leadership program in my life. Uh, permit me distract you a little with this human interest story. True to be told is that, is that until last Thursday, December 23rd, 20, uh, Thursday, 7th, December 2023, when I was contacted to be one of the presenters of this, the speech of this ceremony, I've never thought that a day would come in my life that I will stand before a crowd of distinguished professors, gurus, and UN uh, experts to present a speech like this. But you wouldn't understand what I mean, but over 40 years behind, the family I was born into was a perfect case study of extreme poverty. Ironically, my late father had two wives and 20 children. Few that struggled to complete elementary education never attempted secondary education except me. From secondary school to where I am today, I have solely been responsible for every course of my studies. Yet today I am humble with, humble with multiple degrees international certifications and great expertise in various professional sectors. Today, I am great, a great consultant and CEO of a very dynamic local NGO that's non-governmental organization as well as coordinator of a civil society organization platform. I know you will be interested to know what brought me into this program. But I will tell you now that two years behind, I mean, that the two Anglophone re minority regions of my country, Cameroon, where I come from, are into a seven years protracted conflict. This Anglophone community, uh, long they, they have a long standing grievances rooted in feelings of marginalization, forced assimilation, and unequal ex decision making power from the dominant Francophone government that culminated into a crisis in 2016 that to date has led to separatist insurgents that are killing people day and night. Among several consequences of this crisis, 
is the first closure of formal schooling since 2017, which has led to 46% of schools remaining closed and over 1,200,000 children out of school. My findings on the ground reveal that 90% of the militia fighters are unemployed youths, both female and male, many with degrees but no skills, several others with no certificates and no skills, and others with informal vocational skills but no capital. And this is where my problem lies. Coincidentally, I found this Tibet leadership program in of 2023, and I saw an opportunity to acquire knowledge, develop skills, and learn new strategies, and equally engage into new platforms and networks in the direction of inclusive job creation and sustainable development, which is my core career and expertise. I want to particularly salute the designers of the various models of this training, which I consider inextricably linked to each other. What do I mean? I mean that all the courses, all the program, all the topics that were delivered are, con are connecting, connecting to each other and timely with respect to their focus on the sustainable development goals and beyond. However, I want to specifically highlight the most noticeable and, trigg and triggering idea of this program, which is UNESCO strategy for Tibet 2022-2029, transforming technical and vocational education and training. It is directly responding to the needs and issues in Tibet that I desire to address when talking about institutional transforming transformation in Cameroon, which is my country, in my capacity as civil society organization leader. For your interest to know, my organization, the NGO which I lead, has consistently for the past five years been promoting and providing education in emergencies in partnership with UNESCO, UNICEF, Plan International, the Global Education Cluster, and Save the Children to out-of-school children in Cameroon affected by conflict. They have not been going to school since 2017 to date. This is recognizing that education is a human right and a transformative concept in the face of rising challenges, trends, and future horizons. Conscious of our role as NGOs, therefore, in the implementation of the Sustainable Development Goals, and as critical friends and partners to government and other actors in education, our flexibility and adaptability in the face of new challenges makes it possible for us to promote the integration of UNESCO strategy for Tibet 2022-2029 into our national education programming. I'm talking specifically about Cameroon. Ladies and gentlemen, let me seize this opportunity to share the new learnings I have gained from this Tibet leadership program that I think are equally shared by my other colleagues of this program. I think the concept of greening digitalization and social inclusion in Tibet and skills development were virtually new, new learnings based on the approach of UNESCO UNIVEC innovative and promising practices in Tibet. Each practice or each module of this sector demonstrates how Tibet can be designed to address textual challenges. They present the enabling conditions for success and provide a snapshot of the positive impact on communities and their role in attaining the Global Action Program of Education for Sustainable Development. Dear distinguished personalities, I should not leave this extraordinary forum without asking for more. 
in all humility and on behalf of the green community of Tibet leaders of this program, I am using this opportunity to ask for support from UNESCO and UNIVOC and its partners. As Tibet leaders of 2023, we appreciate UNESCO's UNESCO UNIVOC for enhancing our capacities and enabling the creation of a UNIVOC network within which, within which we can promote knowledge exchange and peer learning. Yet, like Oliver Twist, we need just a little more, including one, technical and where possible, appropriate financial assistance that targets support to individual organizations and institutions to be delivered over an extended period of time based on our in, based on our development needs or problem problems as identified two we need thematic interventions involving activities to mobilize new commitments through workable policy interventions at national levels and leveraging existing initiatives and partnerships, including those that emerge in response to UNESCO strategy for Tibet 2022-2029. And finally, we need more training, including in-person workshops that permit interactions with other learners and instructors in a physical setting that will provide opportunities for us to learn firsthand through and for greater clarity and understanding. Thank you and thank you so very much and may God bless you all for this wonderful opportunity you have given us to study. Humbly submitted by Shu Martin, Executive Director Green Partners Association and Regional Coordinator Northwest Civil Society Organization Platform, Cameroon. Over to you, Roari. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you very much. Thank you, Shu. And, and thanks to both graduates. It, it was really nice to hear, uh, you know, how it affected you from even your like uh, cultural uh, context and background. So uh, we really appreciate to hear the graduate experience uh, because it does help us to understand what's going on and actually how to move forward and improve uh, future programs. So we really appreciate the inputs that you've just given. Um, now, I mentioned at the start of the first webinar, it's at the start of the webinar, that uh, graduates now belong to the TVET Leadership Program alumni. And this is an important group of leaders that have uh, brought the learnings of the program into their professional lives. Uh, and now you are part of this alumni group. So uh, on this note, I think it's a good idea to introduce uh, a former alumni of the program to kind of give you uh, ideas of what to expect as an alumni uh, men uh, member. So I'm going to introduce Miss Amy Prue, who's the Professor and Academic Program Coordinator at Niagara College in Canada, and she will her, uh, share her perspectives and experience as an alumni. Uh, so Amy, over to you. Thank you so much. It's an honor to be with our esteemed guests and colleagues and our friends and family today to celebrate the completion of the 2023 TVET leadership class. Here, we are taught by the Haudenosaunee, the indigenous people living in Niagara in Canada, where I am, that when we speak in a place of honor, we start with a word of thanksgiving or the Gananyok. These are the words known as the words before all else. And with these words, we give thanks to the sun and moon, the sky and the wind, the rain and the snow and the thunder. And we give thanks to the water. We thank the animals, the birds and the fish, the trees, plants, rocks and soil. And we give thanks to the people. And then there's a particular line where we give thanks for teachers. And we gather our minds to greet and thank the enlightened teachers who have come to help throughout the ages. When we forget how to live in harmony, Teachers remind us of the way we are instructed to be as people living in the natural world. With one mind, we send greetings and thanks to our caring teachers. And now our minds are one. And I really like that line. Now our minds are one. We create a shared purpose for our thoughts and good work. And the words before all else is not a prayer. It's a, it's a way of 
being together to create a shared purpose. So the theme of your class, vision for change, knowledge for change, skills for change, you came together with a vision for your TVA institutions as a community of practice within the UN EVOC system. The world needs change. We're in urgent transformation and education because of all this change is rapidly transforming. We as members of this community become that catalyst for change. We need it more than ever. Climate change is impacting how we live and work. Global conflicts demand change from our society and how we value each other. Technology and access to resources is changing dramatically. For me, not only as a teacher, but also as a farmer, as someone who works in the food processing sector, someone who has a lot of technical outreach within Canada and around the world, it's been really interesting to see that change. I've been watching COP28 the past weeks. And for me, it was exciting to see the world come together to say that food systems transformation is a critical need in climate change action. But you all know this, that change doesn't happen magically. It takes people who have skills to make change happen. And for every change, we have to have a skilled person to do it. So for us as skills people, change is our opportunity. Now, we came together under the same mission, teachers, educators, all of us change leaders. We reflect on that framework that we shared. Uh, one of the ones in our class was from Dr. Marguerite Pavlova, who wrote about the typology of skill for greening TVET. And that before we can do technical transformation, we have to create a shared value system so that our education community can reflect that back out to our society. Now, the Guyanus Hagawa, or the Great Law of Peace, is the original law of the land where I stand. And it was first spoken 800 years ago. And in this law, there are stories that tell us how we live and work as communities in the natural world. We're always changing towards the better. And so it's a powerful message of change leadership. And it has many, many stories about teachers and students together. One story stands out about the five communities that make up the Haudenosaunee Indigenous Confederacy that is here in Niagara. They would consistently compete with each other and wage battle and they'd take revenge on each other and fight for their resources. But the peacemaker Takanawita brought one of their rebellious leaders, Hiawatha, to the longhouse. And Hiawatha took a moment to reflect who he was. He looked at the water in his cooking pot. He saw a face of misery and sadness and he dwelled in that sadness. But when the peacemaker Takanawita stood over the shoulder of Hiawatha, he suddenly saw a face of joy and peace reflected in that water. Now, Hiawatha actually saw the face of the peacemaker, not his own, but he thought it was his own. And in that change of perspective, he changed his view about himself. A good teacher has the power to reflect the values that they want their students to believe within themselves. Our vision for change, when reflected to our students and communities, has huge power and potential. So I was so fortunate to be in the TVET leadership class of 2022. I joined with a great sense of hope, but tempered with some reality in that it's not just a webinar series, it's real work. And for me to make it work, I had to join my class in the middle of the night at four in the morning because I do have a full-time job teaching. I have a family, I have a farm to take care of. And it's so easy as a change leader to ask yourself, do I really need to take on this? We have that change transformation curve where oftentimes we we can fall into a space of frustration and inertia and stop the change that we need to do but if we really want to accelerate change we need to deliberately reflect those values that we need and build on the enthusiasm and momentum of each other and so it, i took my own time to reflect and thought about the people that I had met on my TVET journey. Teachers need teachers too. So in my decision, I reflected on what shaped my teaching practice. Hope and perseverance changes my own vision. I think of my own students and the purpose they give me every morning. Their stories remind me of the importance of what we do. Many of them are youth brimming with hope. Some of them are mature students who want to change their lives and their families and children as well. Many people coming into my classroom are 
people with dreams of being an entrepreneur and starting their own business. Others are immigrants coming to Canada with hopes of peace and prosperity. We also have many people with disabilities who need transformation so they can stay working and participate in the food system. Another reflection I had, thinking of my colleagues in the Vietnam Skills for Employment project where we brought agri-food science and technology education to youth in Vinh Long, Vietnam. This is a space where uh, flooding and soil salination from climate change is impacting how agriculture works. And we spent years working together, transforming the teaching practice first. So we went from teaching in the didactic to teaching in the student-centered space. And we empowered the teachers to be catalysts who could spur on entrepreneurial leadership with their students. Of course, we had some technical food processing stuff in there as well. I also thought about the, the, the program and reflected on the leaders in Jamaica that I worked with in the Skills to Access the Green Economy Project. Through years of hurricanes and deforestation, the people said it's time for change and they wanted to reclaim their environment through reflecting the natural law of Ital, which is part of the Rastafarian movement, to eat locally produced and minimally processed sustainable foods, foods that were also going to be safe and economically viable for them. And last, I reflect on being in Rome with the United Nations Food and Agriculture Program, meeting with youth leaders and educators who wanted to see that education um, system transform agriculture. Their willingness to experiment and innovate was really, really inspiring. And these are young leaders who are working with people who mostly are not employed in education or training. They dream of creating a food system that is inclusive for everyone. And I want to be encouraging them on their journey, helping them with pedagogical support. So change leadership is not easy. It's, it's easy to fall back into inertia, into overwhelm and hopelessness. But the world needs changed leaders like all of you more than ever. Your role in TVET means that your, or your impacts get multiplied to dozens, sometimes hundreds and thousands of people. And your institutions bring together people who want to take their new skills and take them out to employers, to family members, to the community and beyond. Global communities look towards their schools with sense of pride and institutional transformation towards sustainable values is going to reflect back in what we want from our society. So just going back one more time to the great law of peace stories that I was sharing earlier, the peacemaker Tekanawita called the leaders together and said a simple story. He took one arrow in his hand and snapped it into two. And then he took a bundle of arrows and tried to break it. It could not be broken. When we choose to work together in a good mind, our intentions can never be broken. And so the power of the UN Ivak Leadership School is bringing us all together as a community, sharing that power of TVET as a transformative force for good. When we work together in one mind, we cannot be broken. And I'm grateful to be part of your community and looking forward to find more ways to support all of you in your change strategy. And so in the closing words of the words before all else, we say we now have arrived at the point where we end our words and turn to do our good work. And if something was forgotten, we leave it to each individual to send greetings and thanks in their own way. And now our minds are one. Thank you. Thank you, Amy. That, that was a really inspiring speech. And I think that many of the participants here will really take that to, to heart. Uh, really love the uh, uh, kind of the background that you gave us there. That was really, really appreciating. It's really great seeing the alumni of the TVET Leadership Program really going from strength to strength uh, in the years that have passed. So thank you for uh, your intervention here. So uh, next up uh, is someone you'll actually all be familiar with uh, as he's appeared through the uh, entire program over the last two months. Uh, this will be the final intervention and it's by Mr. Olivier Pume, Chief of the Technical Cooperation Unit and Head of the Univoc Network Secretariat. And he's here to talk about the next steps and perspectives uh, after the leadership program. So Olivier, the floor is yours. Rory, thank you very much uh, for giving me the floor. I am very happy to to intervene here and share with the with the, with the, with the participant our perspective for the last step of this uh, this this training. We are we are very happy to be with them. 
And I really hope that we will be able to continue our long journey together. Do you see my screen? Yes, we can see the screen. Yes. Yeah, yes, so, we can see your screen very well. Yes. Okay, thank you very much. So uh, uh, as I was saying, uh, this training, this, this for us, we don't consider the leadership program as a training. We consider our leadership program as an opportunity for us to meet together, to have peer learning, to exchange, to network. So just after the one, one to two month training exchange, we suppose that it is the start of our long journey together. So technically, in terms of result, we what we expect from the participant from this training as the first step is like uh, Ami was saying, people who will be able in their institution to bring some change in what they are doing in the day-to-day -day job. So we to make change is start by our own our job that we used to do in the, our day-to-day -day -day work. So because in this training, you there were something related to the to the vision, to to the vision, to the knowledge, to the skills, to the proposal. So we have all these aspects that are related to change. So for us, using this perspective of module one to module four, in uh, in the in, in it, it was to make the uh, the people, the participants, really capture what are the key steps, what are the key knowledge, what are the key skills needed to really be the change agent. So for us, the main objective, the main expectation after this training, after this program, is to have to make the participant act in their institution as change agent. This is what our, our main expectation. The second expectation we would like to have, and we hope we will be able to have it, and I am also happy to have my AMI because AMI also, we have worked in some project after, after her PLP, and I am also expecting that we will continue to work together next year on project development. Uh, it is really to, work together in the development and implementation of relevant TL proposal and project. So during this, um, this uh, TLP, you were through different module, you propose some proposal, and we also take the time to look some of them. You have the opportunity to, uh, to share. So we have some person who share some of, the, some of their proposal during the last webinar. And for us, what we would like to do in the next step is to try to select again some of them work together, link also with some alumni and say, okay, these are some good uh, proposals that we have during this edition. Let's just see together how we can work together and prove this proposal. And what we expect from you is to be able to come to us and tell us, these are the bilateral part. We have in different countries what we call bilateral and multilateral partner. Each country have bilateral and multilateral partners that every year used to say, I want to support this proposal. I want to work on this area. So our key expectation is to receive from you many emails telling us, we just have this opportunity from this partner of my country. We would like to work together on my proposal. Let us work together. Let us see how we can finalize it. Let us see how we can submit this proposal. So for us, what we would like to have from you is to receive, to have your, your email telling us, let us work together on this one. And Amu is a good example of a TLP because we received from her many emails like that where she say, this is, a, this is an opportunity in my country. Let us work together. Let us submit something. So this is something that we are expecting from all of you. Receive lots of email from you saying, this partner wants to support us in this area. Let us develop together a project and submit. So this is the second key expectation that we would like to have from you after this training. And we are able, we are available. UNESCO University is a big team. We have people working on greening, people working on, on, on inclusion, people working on entrepreneurship. We all have almost experts working on all the area. So when we re if you have any proposal, any opportunity in your country by a bilateral partner, let us know. We will be able to work with you and together submit if necessary together. So this is for us one ex good expectation that we have from you. The third expectation that we have is what we speak about community. For us, the TLP is also to set up a community, people who are able to discuss together. We will be happy to see you develop partnership. I remember two, uh, two three weeks ago, we have an event here in Bonn where it was, we have five part MOU, Memorandum of Understanding that was signed between some former partner. One, one of them say it is during the TLP of 2019, that he meet his partner. And to, during our event three weeks ago here in Univoc, they signed an MOU 
that was a partnership between them. And they remember, they say it was during the TLP 2019 that we make the first contact and we were able to celebrate. So what we would like to have, what we hope is that in the upcoming year, we will be able to celebrate some MOU, some partnership, some letter of intent that was signed between former partner, for former participant of this TLP. For us, this is the success of the TLP, having lots of partnership signed between members that participate to the TLP. So I hope that next year we could be able to celebrate some MOU signed between partner of this participant of this, this partnership, this training. We also hope that we do, I see that there were a WhatsApp group that was set up during this TLP that was very active. And we hope that this WhatsApp group will continue and we hope we could be able to have something to Facebook, LinkedIn, all this kind of platform that we continue to make you network exchange together. So this is something that we hope we will have later. The third point that we are hoping also is that UNESCO Univoc is the hub of knowledge, is a platform for knowledge exchange. And we will, we will be happy to meet you, all of you participating in all our activities that are related to knowledge, information sharing at regional and international level. We hope that we will be able to participate to webinar series, facilitate some webinar series. Some, you will be able to propose some idea for discussion papers that we can develop together. We have some glossary where we need some terminology of Tibet in your country. What, how, how do we develop? What's the name of, what is the definition of some terminology on Tibet in your country? Because we have, for example, what we call Tibet, Tibet Tipedia glossary that try to capture the definition of some terminology of Tibet in different countries. We know that there's some difference. We just want to raise it and make people know what, how, what is the definition in the different country. We hope that you could be able to work and test, share with us some innovative and promised practice. We have also in the house a, an unit that try to capture what are the good practice and try to share. So we hope you could be able to come to us in the upcoming year, upcoming month and tell us following the, the leadership program, I was able to work on this and these are the good practice that I come out and I would like to share with the other people. We have also what we call the Tibet country profile. That is for us the way to capture what is the state of Tibet in the different country. And we hope that you could be able to log in our website and check the Tibet profile of your country and tell us if things is good or not and give us also some orientation on how to improve this uh, the Tibet profile. We have also the online library. We have the Tibet forum. And the Tibet forum is the one of the past, past, the first product that we developed in UNESCO Univoc is a platform where people join together, exchange, discuss, if you are looking for a, a, an expert, you are looking for a, a, a partner, you are looking for someone to discuss about any thematic, you can join the Tibet Forum and share with the other. So this for us, the more this, plat this platform are active, the more we are happy from the TLP. The, TL the leadership program is for us the way really to reinforce knowledge and social sharing at regional and international level. The other point that I would like to share with you that is, uh, that is, uh, very important is that you were during the training, you were discussing about green skills, the green TV, digital TV, entrepreneurial TV. But the minimum, even if you don't have a strategy, is to have people who are who have the basic skills on this area, who have the basic skills on entrepreneurship, on digital and greening. And presently in UNESCO Univoc, we have many, many, many partners, as you have seen here, that propose to us a lot of training, free training. And they are also able to support you in the implementation of the training in the field. So they just want the request from you and say, I would like to train 1,000, 10,000, 1 million. Anytime that a partner wants to train a number of people on this area, we will be happy to partner with them and support them. So we, we, we hope that you, after this training, you were convinced, you were, you were convinced that it is really important to facilitate or to promote green skills, digital skills, entrepreneurial skills, so we hope that we could be able to receive lots of email from you and say, I would like to train 1,000 people on green skills in my country, in my region. I would like to train 10 million. We hope you can have this kind of request and we will be happy to partner with you and promote and support you and link you with our partner so that you could be able to. We have, for example, last year, we just published one call from Geo. Geo wanted to Trend, uh, to, to, money, to make the mentorship with women. She wants to promote green skills, digital skills to, uh, among women in the different country. So presently, we will, we will be happy to have people say, I would like to promote among women green skill, digital skill. If you have something like that, 
we can be able to link you with Dior. We can be able to link you with Festo. All these people are, have relationship with us. We have some MOU with them, and they are ready to support any person who want any institution who want to promote their skill in their country. So hope that after this, we could be able to partner also on this on this green on this global skills academy. I would like to finish with this that we call the coercion initiative uh, that you, we also have in the house. We would like the next year to also promote, for us the coercion initiative is just something that we want. We want center, we want you to work together. We want people who join the network to want to work together. And for us, we provide technical and financial support. And we next year we will promote partnership between center from all the region. We would like to have proposal that make that link partner from all the region of the, of the network. We have Asia, we have America, we have Africa, we have Europe, and we have Latin America. The priority for next year will be to support proposals that come from people who have this five scope. So we hope really that you could be able also to come to us next year from the proposal we have developed and say we would like to your support on this, we were able to have partnership with the five region. This is our contribution. We just want your support to this because in the question initiative also, the principle is not to support 100%. We give priority to proposal that is that cover all the all the region and also propose that, that people are also bring their contribution because the idea is not is co-action. Mean you bring something, we bring something and you implement and we do it together. So we hope really that next year we could be able to have a lot of proposal where you bring your contribution and just ask a seed money, a seed support for us, and we'll be happy to support next year. So these are some key elements, and there are many other opportunities also that we can do with you. But let us really hope that you could be able after this to come back and take time to must to learn to to build something, to build network, to build collaboration, and later we could be able to work together. So we are very happy from this promotion. There were a lot of good proposal, a lot of good, good, good proposal. So we are, we are almost certain that uh, in the upcoming month, upcoming year, we will have lots of joint work together, joint work. So what I can advise to you is just to make a, like a foreseen, like a, an analysis of the opportunity providing by bilateral and multilateral and bilateral partner of your country. Take time to check what they have, they, they support, what are the area that they prioritize, and let come back to us and we will be able to work together to develop joint proposal and submit together. So I am very happy from this and you will receive by the end of the next week, your certificate. And really we hope we could continue our collaboration through the WhatsApp group, through the Facebook group and through the alumni group that we want to set up very soon. Thank you very much. And I give the floor to Rory, because I, I, there are a lot of people that we would like to thank, like I mean, like one was so Rory, please take yeah. the floor and thank you, thank you, and congratulate all the participants. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, it, it, thanks for these words. I think it really uh, sets a, a good framework for the graduates uh, for the next steps and expectations and opportunity. And it's it's been a, a couple of months now that we've been ready to to implement this uh, uh, program, and uh, we've really been kind of inundated and and uh, we've taken it to heart. Uh, your kind of like uh, uh, feedback and uh, uh, responses to the program. So uh, I think I would uh, uh, kind of like to thank you. And, and this goes on behalf of the whole team for all the graduates who've, who've really engaged and were motivated and uh, really, really kind of like a, it took a lot from the program. Uh, so this is one thank you uh, to you, a big thank you, uh, because I suppose the program couldn't be made without you either and your participation pay, participation and presence. I'd also like to thank One World uh, and Belinda and her team uh, and the experts provided uh, during the program. Uh, their facilitation was really invaluable and uh, I think uh, it lent a lot to the uh, you know, interaction between the breakout sessions and, and that type of engagement. Uh, and also I'd like to th uh, thank the team at UNESCO Univoc as well. Like uh, uh, we have a, a, a smallish team, but we really pull together uh, to kind of implement this program. Um, so yeah, it's I think it's been a great success. I've been really delighted to interact with all of you over the last uh, number of months. I'm wishing you all every success in the future. Uh, and I hope that we get to uh, see each other again sometime soon in the future. So on that note, thank you very much for everyone uh, and we will see you soon. Thank, thank you. you.